quenching the spirit. He said, do this, you know, do. Do this, you know, do. Soon you will not go hear anything again. God will be speaking. You won't hear anything. So don't be like that. So Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in again. I'm super excited to make this video. I'm super excited to connect with you. And I am happy to share what I want to share with you today. And it's all about my life experience in finding my purpose. So let's just get right into the video. Yeah, welcome guys. So I'm going to be sharing my life journey. I'm going to be sharing my experience on how I found my life purpose yes so let's sit down and make sure you watch this video to the end because i'll be sharing a lot of things that happen i'll be sharing a lot of things that um i experienced um on the path to discover my purpose i'm going to be sharing them so let's just settle down let's get right in there yeah so i'm going to be um speaking around what a what purpose is what is the purpose of a man in christ a christian what is your purpose and well if you are you have not we are going to get there so what is your purpose as a christian um why why do we need to find our purpose um when do we need to find our purpose and how do we find our purpose so i'm going to be sharing my experiences in between so what is purpose i'm not going to go so technical i will bring a dictionary meaning so i'll just say a simple um definition or explain what a purpose is now using um uh let's say an instrument for as an example let's use um toothpaste what is the purpose of a toothpaste is the aim and the purpose of a toothpaste is to wash your mouth is to make your mouth clean though you will use tooth um, brush but you will put paste on it and then use it to wash your mouth to have a fresh breath and all that is the purpose what is the purpose of having a light in a place is to lighten up the place so that you don't fall now, what is the purpose of a man? That is the reason, the basic reason why God created that man. Because God is the maker of men. God is, one, is the creator of every man on earth. Whether you are saved, whether you are not saved, whether you believe God exists, whether you, believe, whether you don't believe, well, any of, any of your ideology, in as much as you are a human being, you have a nostri, you have um, breath from your nostri, you breathe and you are walking, you are like alive. I mean, God is your creator. That is a universal truth. And that's just the truth. So nothing can fight that, actually. So when it comes to um, purpose of a man, so the purpose of a man is the reason for creating that man. The reason God made that man. The reason God um, made that man exist. The reason why the man is still living. That is the purpose of a man. In a simple, clear term, the purpose of a man is the reason for your existence why are you here the reason why you are here is your purpose what are you meant to serve what is your role in on this earth are you just here nobody is just here as a matter of fact whether you have developed discovered your life purpose or not you're not just here everybody has a mission everybody has something they've been they've been put here to achieve so that is what purpose is all about so to our heartline, that's what's what why do we need to discover our purpose the reason why we need to discover our purpose number one is because we have a creator that we are accountable to every man every woman has a creator which is god god almighty and we are going to give account because our life is like a gift to us our breath is a gift to us we didn't do anything to earn it or to deserve it even being alive it's not because you do anything to deserve it. There are a lot of people that can pray more than you, that can worship more than you, but God in his mercy and in his plan decide that, okay, at this moment, you are going to be alive, and that's it. So back to, back to why you need to discover your purpose. You have a creator, and then you are going to give account. So your life is given to you to make use of. So you are going to basically give account of how you spend your life. What have you been doing with your life? You are going to give account. That is one of the reasons why you need to discover your purpose, work in it, and fulfill it. Another reason why you, should, you, why you need to discover your purpose is because it gives you a, a, a kind of direction in life. And it helps to shape your choices. Now, to, um, in the area of direction, like... If you know that this is why you are created, you will know the kind of jobs to take. You won't just jump on any job offer. You will know the kind of person to marry. You will know the 
kind of city to live in you will know the kind of place to stay for example if you are called to be um let's say an evangelist or let me, let me use or a revivalist or an evangelist now you know that you are going to and then it depends on where god is calling you if you've discovered okay this is the area god is calling me. god wants me to go to villages and all that you know it will shape where you will where you will stay if god is sending you to the village or he's sending you to um to um city you know where to stay you know where to live at every point in time you won't just do anything and when it comes to marital choices i'm going to use myself as an example why the reason why you need to discover your purpose is so that it will help you to it will help your choice I remember sometimes, I think, um, 2020, no, 2020, yeah, 2020, yeah, 2019 slash 2020. So, at that time, I was having a, I was having issue in my past relationship, and there was this guy that came around, you know, we used to talk, we're just friends, yeah, but you know all those friends that you are just getting to know each other, like, let's just get close and let's just know each other, nothing serious yet. And then this guy is a businessman. Do I love business? Absolutely. In fact, I've been doing business for over like 20 years. My mom is a businesswoman, core businesswoman. So that I've lived most of my life doing business with her. I've been working for her and all that. Even now that I'm grown, I'm still doing I'm still into closing business. So this person is a business person. Obviously, it's something I really like. I enjoy business. You know. At the point where, where I broke up with my ex, then, you know, I told him about that I'm single and all that, and then he, he started going in that. Even before then, I saw the signs. He was already giving me signs. Started going in the direction of let's be together. And I said, okay, give me time. I didn't take a lot of time. I think the next day, I just told him. I said, I'm really sorry, but it's not going to work. Now, before he mentioned it, I've been thinking about it because he, he has been seeing a lot of things that you know now when the guy likes you and wants you to be together. You know the kind of things they will say to you. So. I was like, okay, okay. Then I was thinking about it. At that time, my ex was doing, was not <laughs> cooperating well. You know what I mean. And then I told God, I said, God, I am going to marry this guy. Because I knew he was going to ask me out, obviously. He has asked me out, but not official. So I don't pre pre presume or assume. I would like you to like come and say it clearly, say it to my face, and say it and say it again. Not that you'll be using so boy, I already got the signs that he wanted to he wanted us to be together and all that. It was already even talking about it. So I was already thinking about it that okay, let me even what's up with this guy, let me even scan him and screen and all that. And then I told God, I said, see, this part, this guy that is even this that was my ex, is even giving me stress. I mean, this is someone that is, you know, and so doing well, a businessman is doing so well, you know. And then I was like, I told God, I said, God. I am not going to, I'm really sorry, I'm going to marry this person because I like him. No, just, sorry, that, that sounds shallow, but that's not just the reason. But I just connect with the guy. I was going to talk to God about him and, you know, God did not see anything. Do you know what I told God? I was just talking to God. I said, see, this guy, this is my, that was my ex at that time. I was going to leave him. I told God I was going to leave. I was going to forget about it. I was not going to try to make anything work again. I was just focus on the person that is coming around me and see and pray about it and just take the right steps you know and then do you know what happened the next day the next day was sunday i was in church god was talking to me god began god began to talk to me no on that saturday as i spoke to god about the guy that i'm considering this person no, this other one that is not doing well i want to fashion him and move on right you know god was talking to me when i told god i said god i don't want to preach again <laughs> This is a personal conversation, right? So don't judge me yet. You know, I was tired. The person I was dating before was a pastor and all that. And not like I was I was in with him because he was a pastor. No, it was because I was led and that's a past and story for another day. So I was like, this person is a businessman, he's a Christian that tends to him. He's a child of God. Yes, I know he's a child of God, but he's not the kind he's not the kind of person I am supposed to marry as per my calling and my purpose. I knew that, but I was like, I really like a lot of things. Apart from this part of this guy is not a preacher or, or a gospel minister, so to speak. He's not someone that is so, like, interested in preaching and all that. So I was like, I told God, I said, I want to try, I want to, let's talk about this guy. And God told me that, not expressly, I could perceive, it was a perception that, no, this is not it. And I was like, 
But I did not like God spoke to me expressly. It was just a perception. I knew, I knew oh, God is saying, I knew when God is, I, I know when God is saying no and when God is saying yes. So I perceived that God was not leading me in that direction. Hmm. The next thing when I got to church, as I as I got to church, I sat down, God brought some things to my remembrance suddenly. I don't even know from where. The next day was on, on a Sunday. And then God began to speak to me. No, I was just hearing, like, we were even worshipping God at that time. We were praising God. I was worshipping God. And then God began to speak to me, like, clearly, like, oh, no. You are not going to do this. You are not going to, you are going to preach the gospel. When, not like it was imposing it on me, but it was just making me to see that, oh, I'm supposed to be preaching the gospel. People of God. Somebody called me, I think, okay, that was on Saturday evening, uh, after the old conversation with the Lord. Somebody called me and was saying something in that direction. Not directly, but I just knew that, ah, this is God talking to me again about this matter. When I now got to church on Sunday, God was just, that's it. He was just telling me, ah, I say, I was crying. I was crying. It was not worship that was actually making me cry, but everything God was, God was talking to me about like, no, this and that and that. But I decoded, I knew what God was saying, like, no, this is not the way to go. Because I told God, God, I don't want to preach. I'm not going to preach again. I'm going to, when I marry this guy together, we'll do business. We we'll make big profits. We are going to buy Bible and we are going to distribute it. After all, we are also doing the work of God now, and we are going to get our reward. After all, we are going to buy. We are going to do business together. We are going to make a lot of profit. We will buy Bible. That was all. I was. That was. All, I was just justifying everything. I was telling God like that. We are going to buy Bibles. We are going to distribute it, and I am very sure we are going to get our reward because your word said if you give any of these little one water for my sake, you will not lose your reward. So anything you do in the name of the Lord. You get a reward, but I could hear God telling me no. I mean, and it was the truth is I was done with that relationship, and I wanted to move on. And I I was already thinking about okay, this and the person is not as if I just met him. I've met him for like three months. We've been talking for like three months, so I really know that I've really connected with this person, and I really like this person. Like I like this person. Then when God, when I saw that God was telling me you no, know, ah. I was like, well, we can buy Bibles and distribute it now. At least that is also the work of the gospel. But you see one thing about your purpose. Your purpose is your purpose. If God says, this is what you're supposed to do. If you try to go and do this in another way, then you're doing something else entirely. So on that, like I said, on that reason, is to shape your choice of a partner. So I didn't go ahead with that person. I just told the person that I'm really sorry. I will not be able to. Oh, I didn't just to. That particular day, when I got to church, our pastor was like, if you want to join choir department, everyone in church, move to this place. If you want to join ushering, move to this place. If you want to be a different, different department, move to this place. But I don't even know what was. I was not even with me. I was just sitting down on my seat. Ha, I, mean, I don't even know why I didn't even stand up from my seat. You know, it's sh shocking. But somehow, somehow, I was not led to stand up from my seat. It was that remaining five of us. The pastor now said, the five, the remaining of you will be in outreach units. They're going to be in outreach units. And then guess what, guys? Pastor asked the old church, okay, you should pick a leader. Everybody picked me. I was like, oh, do why? Etu Bami Debi Bai. Like, you still follow me, rich here. Hey! At that time, I can't know, say, I don't want to say what to parry. Like, this is it. I knew that, I, of course, I knew my calling far back, but you know what that means? Like, God used everything to tell me, no, this is not the way you are supposed to go, even though I know. You are very funny children of God. Like, you know that this is not the way. But you just want to do it. Like, you know what? Then you now start giving God reasons why you like you. So that he will reason with you. Like, reason with me, right? I mean, that was what happened. So I didn't marry the person. I just told him, I'm really sorry. You're a very nice person. I really like you, but I'm sorry I can't marry you. He was like, why now? I said, I'm really sorry. You know? And that was the end of it. Yeah, so then when it comes to the person I married. Now, I'm talking about how it shapes your choices. The person I married, which is my husband, I said I wanted to do an outreach. I just posted it on WhatsApp. And then he will immediately, it's not even up to one minute, he reached out to me that he wants to join me for the outreach and all that. I was like, hey, okay. I now deleted the status because I felt like, no, I shouldn't have posted it. I should post it later, maybe after I've done some one or two more assignments. Then I said, okay, I'll communicate with him. Meanwhile, I've already deleted the status. So it was the only one that saw it, and it was the only one that reached out on that day. So after that, we became friends. We became close friends. Like, we worked together 
prepared for the outfit together, visited the place together, did everything together, and he was a brother in my church, you know. So we got talking, and I got to discover that ah, this guy is really a, a man of God, like a child of God, like he knows God, he loves God. He was just, even though there was nothing like marriage in my mind, yeah, but we became friends, and you know what that means, so that's that. Yes, yeah, so the third reason why you should know your purpose, why you should find out what your purpose is, is because finding your purpose and fulfilling it and working in it gives you a sense of fulfillment, it gives you a sense of peace. There's this peace, there's this happiness, there's this joy, there's this fulfillment. Have you ever heard people say, Oh, I don't like this because I'm not really getting fulfillment, I feel like I'm not in the right place, and all those things? It happens. So, if you find your purpose, it will help you clear that area of your life. So, now let's get to how to discover your purpose. Or First thing first, you need to know God. What do I mean? When I say know God in this aspect, I am talking about you need to like believe in Christ and receive the life of God. You need to be born again. That's the first thing. Because you cannot know Christ. You can't know God except through His Spirit. And you can't have that um, fellowship with His Spirit unless you are born again. So that is the primary thing. That is the ultimate thing. You need to first be born again so that you can have access to when I say access now, you can have fellowship with God and you can learn about yourself because you cannot know yourself. It's only your maker that can know you, that knows you. I can show you this is who you really are. This is why I created you. This is the path I want you to follow. So you can't know yourself outside God. That is the truth. You can't know yourself outside God. You can't know your purpose outside God. Your purpose is in Christ, is in God. So number one is be born again. How are you, how are you going to get born again? It's not complex. It's not difficult. Christ has paid the price. He died. He rose up on the third day for your justification. So all you need to do is to believe in your heart that Christ actually came in human flesh. He gave his life for us. He died and he rose up on the third day and for you to be saved. That's all. You just need to believe it in your heart. So far you believe it, then that's it. So the, the next thing is for you to have fellowship. Like I said earlier, you cannot know something outside God. You need to have fellowship. You need to ask questions. You need to be able to talk to God and you need to be able to hear God. And this can only happen when you have this fellowship with the Father, when you have this communion, when you have an interpersonal relationship with God. That is when you can now say, oh, I want to speak to God. You can even ask God questions. God, why am I here? And he's going to tell you things. It's, it's as simple as that. It's not complex at all. Okay, so before I before I got into the university, I was just a normal girl. Yeah, I was not a bad girl. Just a normal, random, you know, just a normal Nigeria home girl, you know. And um, when I got into the university, um, I got admission and, you know, I said I was going to come here, do my thing and get out. I didn't plan on going on mission, all those things, or churching things, even though I was going to go to church. But I didn't think about whether I was going to really soak myself deep into Christianity, when I was going to really soak myself deep into knowing God, you know. But along the line, I discovered that I joined a fellowship. And do you know one thing I, I want to... Now, please pay attention to this part very, very carefully because this is my life purpose. This is what happened to me. When I got born again, I didn't, I didn't even, like, have anybody to tell me, go and preach, actually. I just discovered that after church... I will take my Bible. Let's say we I was in campus fellowship, New Life Campus Fellowship. After church, I'll pick my Bible. I'll just go around. I'll preach to people. I mean, I'll tell people about Christ. I'll pray for them. I didn't really, I couldn't even speak in tongues. That's the truth. I was just a Christian that goes to church. I believed in God, you know. But like immediately I believed and received Christ, like getting to know him intimately. I've been going to church for years. I was born into a Christian home, but having this interpersonal relationship with God was not there. That was just the truth. But when I got to school, you know, I now like really got born again, born again, like got awareness of my person in Christ, got awareness of believing in Christ and all those things. So, you know, now it's different because I'm no longer a like church goer, so to speak. And I'm still talking about how like I got to discover my own purpose over time. So I discovered that there's this burning desire to preach and all that, you know, it was part of the process of discovering my purpose. Even though I asked God express questions, right? But discovering it was actually something I saw that, wow, this is just who I am. And it has been like that, and that is who I am. So nothing is changing about that. That's my purpose. So I know my purpose. So, you know, um, like I said, God has a way of directing your path. That says it is God that works in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The willingness you have to do something. Just this strong desire in you. 
this unusual desire, this strength you have that normal person, or sorry, when I say normal person, some other people don't have. They find it difficult to do. Some people they can pass knowledge, they can they know how to transfer knowledge, like and some people cannot do it. So that knowledge transfer could just be a part of something that is a part of a tool in achieving your purpose for that person, right? So what I'm saying is that take note of how God has been dealing with you. Take note of the strong desires in righteousness. Take note of the strong willingness to do something in righteousness, in building people, in investing in people, in something that has to do with kingdom advancement. You know, just take note of those things. In those things lies your purpose. Another thing, another thing I'm going to say on discovering your purpose, we are talking about how to find your purpose, right? Another thing I'll talk about is take your responsibility serious. If you're in church and they say do this, do it. You don't know what and why you are doing it at that time. But over time, you will discover the reason why you are doing it. So if they ask you to do something, don't say no. I'm not the one that killed Jesus. I mean, Christians say such things. It's so unbelievable. I'm not the one that killed Jesus. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm, what I'm saying is take your responsibilities in church at your place of work serious take it seriously don't joke with it in it you will find your purpose you find something that is burning you find that desire you find that strong thing that you need to, to 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 fulfill you will definitely find it it's not even hard at all that's the truth it's just that sometimes it looks as if it's hard but the truth is it's not hard just live according to what i've said just be consistent with what i've said for a few let me say weeks or months you would see you come back and tell me that you've discovered your purpose number one if you are not saved give your life to Christ number two maintain a consistent fellowship with God number three take your responsibility serious another thing I would say which is number four is yield to God if God say go here my dear sister and brother go there if God say go here my sister go there my brother go there if God say don't go don't go do you understand so in that you will discover that ah over time look at the dealings of God in your life Look at the dealings of God in your life. You'll be able to see, oh, this is what I've been doing. This is what I've been getting. This is where I've been functioning. You know, after that um, school period, I will still do evangelism personally. During my NYC days, I still did crusade. I still do all these things. It's not about activity. It's just a strong burning desire in me. And what I also observe, and another thing I want to say, which is number five, on discovering your purpose is ask God. Clearly, God is simple. It's not complicated. When I was having a conversation with the Lord some years ago about who I am and what my purpose is, I got a revelation that I am light. Do you know the beautiful thing? My name means light, like daughter of light. That's the origin of my name. Child of light, daughter of light. That's Margaret. Child of light, daughter of light. So when my parents gave me that name, they didn't make a mistake. They knew... <laughs> I don't know how they chose the name, but people of God, I'm telling you, they did not. My name, Congo, is my purpose. I'm a child of light. Light in what sense? I preach the gospel. I bring the gospel of salvation to people, people that are in darkness, people that are unsaved. I bring the gospel of salvation through preaching. I use my mouth to speak the word, to preach to them. People get saved, give your life to Christ. I say that is my that is what I am supposed to be doing. Some people are supposed to get people saved through other medium. But for me, it is a it's a ministry. When I say ministry, pulpit, like we know okay, there are different kind of ministry. Your ministry could be in the workplace, yeah. Could be, but this one, the, my own purpose is a pulpit. I'm a pulpit preacher. I'm a pulpit evangelist. I am an evangelist. I am called to preach the gospel. I am called to speak word of light. What that will bring people to God, that will bring people to Christ. That is my calling. That is my life purpose. Very clear. Very clear. When people are in darkness, when they are unsaved, I am sent to bring them out of that darkness through the message of the gospel. I am sent to reconcile them back to God. I am an evangelist. There's no doubting about it. Even though a lot of there were, there were time, there was a time I was like, am I sure I'm an evangelist? I mean, I mean, this is even like how many years ago? Let's say four or five years ago. Is it four or five years ago? Now? That's 2017. Yeah, I was I'm not sure because at that time I was operating in prophetic, like I was interpreting um tongues, like I was really operating in prophetic. I was as in I will see, I will see, I will prophesy, I will <laughs> I will interpret different things. But do you know people of God? I was doubting that so people even started calling me prophetess. Me too, I can't ask myself, say. Am I really an evangelist or am I a prophetess? 
prophetess rather, but no, I'm an evangelist. At some point, I thought I was a pastor. Ow. When I was in campus fellowship, I was a um, fellowship president, the fellowship pastor. So, you know, but God has what he's teaching me part time. When I was the president, he has what he was teaching me. When I was in, when I was the person, I had the privilege to be part of the JCCF um, COPs and executives, that's Council of Presidents and Executives. So I learned a lot of things from it, right? Well, fair is how to serve a, a minister. I know how to serve a minister very well. I got that training from all those things. I mean, maybe I don't know if that's the reason, only reason, but it cannot even be the only reason. There are a lot of reasons why I was the president then. And I was a president for two years. I was a pastor of a campus fellowship for two years. So you know what that means. But then I still found myself that, oh, this is what I am called to do. At some point, I even had a revelation. I will tell you the revelation. In that revelation, um, I saw myself with an instrument, a piano. I was pressing it, and I heard a voice. Stand up. And the voice told me to stand up. I was pressing a piano, like making musical instrument, musical sound. I mean, that is good. Maybe I would have thought I'll be a singer, or I would have thought I'll be playing instruments, worshiping God. But no, the spirit, the spirit, the spirit that I know that was the spirit of God told me to stand up and pick that. And what did they ask me to pick? Pick a Bible. So I picked the Bible, and I think I picked the bell. I can't remember the vision very well. But that's gospel. That's me preaching the gospel, not preaching the gospel through drama ministry. Or no, or uh, preaching the gospel through sharing Bibles, like I was saying in the other time. No. Or uh, preaching the gospel through sharing. They say there are many mediums, but me, I'm very clear about my own. I am supposed to hold my microphone, preach the gospel. <laughs> I'm supposed to. I am. That's why I've been doing it, and I'm, I will still continue to do it. God keeping us. Preach the gospel to the whole world, all around the world. Tell, talk about the goodness of God. Help people that are in darkness to see the light, to bring them to God, to bring them to Christ. That is my purpose, and I've just told you how I discovered it over time. The responsibilities that I'm saddled with is in line with that. The places that I, offices I held in church or ministry is in line with that. When it goes to my own desire, just natural desire after I got saved, it's in line with that. Everything is just consistent. Even the past, God's personal dealings with me is just consistent with that. And to crown it all, when I ask God question, who am I? He told me about it. And I'm like simple and my name god also said something about it i'm like so you see it's not hard just look at your life over time don't see it as something that is complex don't see it as something that is difficult because it is not just make sure you are maintaining your fellowship with god you yield to him you take your responsibilities in church serious you don't quench the spirit if the spirit says do this because finding your purpose lies greatly in your obedience to the voice of the spirit Finding your purpose lies greatly in your obedience to yielding to the voice of the Spirit. If you yield today, the voice becomes loud. When I say loud, it's not like it has not been loud. But you, you'll be able to hear it louder. He has been speaking, but maybe you are not hearing. But the more you obey, the more you are able to hear God louder. The more you are able to... But if you keep quenching the Spirit, you say, do this, you know, do. Do this, you know, do. Soon, you will not go hear anything again. God will be speaking. You won't hear anything. So don't be like that. So finding your purpose is... In, is just be consistent in obeying God's spirit. Just be consistent in obeying instruction. Just take your responsibility in church at workplace serious. And then your burning desires, those desires inside you, those things that you just want to do, that you feel like you have the energy, it's just troubling you like a dream, like something. You know, check it if it's consistent, then you find your purpose. It's as simple as that. I hope you've learned one or two things in this video. Um, I'm so grateful and I'm so happy that you watched to the end. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you are here to do so. See you in my next video. Bye.